Hi everyone, thanks for clicking. It's been a couple of days since the WTCS Grand Final, so instead of going through the entire race highlights, I wanted to have a bit more of an in-depth look into exactly how Blumenfeld managed to take Yi out of contention and keep Van Riel's challenge at bay, and in doing so, become the first man to win the Olympic Gold and World Championship in the same year. So for a bit of context going into Edmonton, Yi and Blumenfeld occupied the top spots in the overall WTCS series rankings. The total points being so close that whoever finished ahead would lead the other in the standing at the end of the day. Van Rier was sat in third spot, around 250 points back, meaning he would have to put a few positions between himself and Blumenfeld and Yi to take the overall. However, the top two could guarantee series victory by finishing in the top three on the day. Further back, Hayden Wilde and Leo Berger were in fourth and fifth. As usual, pontoon start positions were chosen in ranking order. Alex Yi positioned himself on the right side and probably couldn't believe his luck when Louis, the strongest swimmer in the triathlon world at the moment, positioned himself right next to him. Blumenfeld, despite getting second pick, chose to put himself more in the middle of the pontoon, about 12 slots down. And really, I couldn't tell you why. Most of the first choosers usually take up a slot on either end to remove themselves from the starting carnage. Maybe Blumenfeld wanted to be close to Yi to ensure he could keep an eye on him, but not so close to give him a draft in the swim. Or maybe he just felt like a bit of a fight. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. As has become expected over the past few races, we see Louis pushing the pace very early in the swim. Louis's injury and resultant lack of run fitness has really spiced up the last couple of races, but Yi isn't able to hold the pace. A little break of three form made up of Louis, Van Riel and Devai. Van Riel won't have known where Yi and Blumenfeld felt were but would have known if the pace is fast up front those two would be struggling and knowing Louis would want to press on on the bike this could be Van Riel's shot at sealing the series title. The front three maintain their gap through the second lap of the swim and Blumenfeld does well to keep the gap steady too coming out 35 seconds down. Alex Yi however has just lost touch with that big group. You can see Blumenfeld well into T1 up here on the yellow arrow just as Yi comes into shot and this sets up a scenario that Blumenfeld manages to take full advantage of through some shrewd tactics and decisions. The leading trio commit to their gap up the first ascent on the main hill, Louis and Van Riel are both very strong riders and have a lot to gain in the overall series ranking by making the gap stick. There's a chase group behind them of around 10 riders, which includes neither Blumenfeld nor Yi, who we can see lost 49 seconds to Louis in the swim. We can see a third chase group just coming into shot here and they appear to be moving at a faster pace in the second group. And by the time the chasers crest the hill, they've merged with the group behind that includes Blumenfeld, but crucially, not Yi. You don't get to see who led that third group up the hill, but I'd put money on it being Blumenfeld. At this point, there's no real certainty on whether or not the groups will all come back together. It's all still to play for. However, as these two groups merge, you see Blumenfeld make a really decisive move here. What you sometimes see when two chase groups come together is that meaningful cooperation falters. The third group is tired or content they have done their work to make the catch, and now the group is so large that nobody has much to gain by pressing on at the front of the group. However, Blumenfeld doesn't allow this to happen. He doesn't wait for others just to roll through until his turn on the front arrives. Instead, he comes out of the pace line and moves up alongside the group, going straight to the front. He's in his full aero tuck, and you can tell he's driving that pace forward because those behind him have to make a bit of a push to get onto his wheel. At this point, Van Riel, Louis and Devai are 30 seconds up the road, and if you listen very closely, you can hear the UCI screams of horror at this photo all the way from Switzerland as they see both the super tuck and clip on aero bars in one photo. Meanwhile, Yi and Wilde are in the third group on the road at this point. Their 15 second deficit to Blumenfeld's group out of the swim has grown to 30 seconds over just one bike lap. Returning to Blumenfeld's group, you can see he is on the front pushing the pace at every key moment and every piece of uphill on the course. And if he isn't near the front of these points, he rides himself there rather than waiting until he finds himself at the front. He has Van Riel up the road who he'll need to finish close to to maintain his series position and he has Yi in the group behind who he'll need to beat to leapfrog in the series standings. So although the decision to press on is made for him, he's very smart in when he actively chooses to hit the front and exert his effort at the right times. There are three key areas where Blumenfeld hits the front and hits the gas every lap and I don't think it's a coincidence. The first is up the main hill about 7 or 8 percent for 600 meters. The second is around this slightly uphill chicane which comes after a corner and you can see Blumenfeld forcing the group to accelerate back up to speed and the third is on the down downhill into transition, keeping the pace high instead of allowing others to roll down and use it for a short break. Obviously, Blumenfeld needs to have incredible bike strength to do this, but he's also timing his efforts very well to ensure he's keeping the pace at points on the course where Van Riel and Yi may be tempted to let up. Yi, on the other hand, is a lot more passive in his group, with Hayden Wilde doing bulk of the work on the front. Had we seen the roles reversed, I think we would have seen Blumenfeld 
Blumenfeld working with Wilde more to catch up the next group, with Yi sat in the chase group. This is not a criticism of Yi, he's a lot less experienced than Blumenfeld and is not known for his bike strength in the same way that Blumenfeld is, but it does highlight where his weakness is relative to athletes like Blumenfeld or Louis, who are able to use their power to recover from or take advantage of scenarios they find themselves in. Despite his bike strength, Blumenfeld can't just sit on the front endlessly, but when he does finish his turn, he's almost bullying others into keeping the pace high. This is a role that Alistair Brownlee was quite well known for in his prime, and it appears Blumenfeld is conducting a very Brownlee-esque race so far. Although he outran Yi in Tokyo, he's doing his best to take Yi out of contention before Yi gets a chance to utilise his ability on the run, a move we've seen Brownlee pull on Mola and Murray many a time before. As a result of the contrasting tactics and roles played by Blumenfeld and Yi, the gap continues to grow out to 40 seconds after two laps, 50 seconds after three laps, and a further five to 10 seconds from there every lap onwards. Time that Yi will have to make up to Blumenfeld on the run to win the world championship. Meanwhile, Blumenfeld and his group are keeping the gap to Louis and Van Riel and Devai steady at 30 seconds. That is until the final lap. Blumenfeld again applying pressure up the hill and actually puts out his fastest time up that hill on the final lap. And from there, he continues to up the pace through the chicane and down the hill eating into the leader's cushion further, ultimately cutting the gap from 25 seconds at the bell to a mere 5 to 10 seconds by the time they come into T2, with Yi and Wild coming in a further 1 minute 15 down. With Yi pretty much out of the picture now, Van Riel up ahead becomes Blumenfeld's biggest threat to the World Championship. A few close that gap very quickly to the front, but Blumenfeld very steadily and I think very sensibly works his way up to Van Riel. Yi can do nothing really other than run as fast a 10k as he possibly can, and he does make up ground on the front group, who are travelling at a decent pace as evidenced by the gap they've opened up on Louis and those they came off the bike with, but not at 100%. Blumenfeld sits steady in this group and bides his time until the final lap, but when he does move to the front, others slowly begin to drop off this group. Serazioni and Hojo first, then Reed and Ryder after the second surge, and finally he manages to get rid of Brufod too. This leaves just himself, Van Riel and Berger. This is significant because in doing so, Blumenfeld secures a top three position here, which is all he needs to do to wrap up the World Championship, regardless of whether he manages to beat Van Riel or not. He doesn't wait for the sprint finish where the outcome could be unpredictable. He tops it off by winning the sprint between these three anyway, stamping his authority all over those series rankings. In the end, Yi does an incredible run to get into the top 10 and puts out the fastest 10K split of the day by some margin. Thank you very much for watching to the end. The WTCS World Championship for 2021 is over, but there's still plenty of triathlon to come this year with the Collins Cup and the Super League too. So if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to see more triathlon content.